Tune in Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the Your Body is Your Pharmacy radio show. Hear from the doctors that were among the first in the U.S. to merge the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda and natural medicines with the advances of modern medical science. Listen to pioneer doctors Varender Sodi, Shalinder, and Anju Sodi to keep up with some of the latest medical advances and learn from some of the true leaders of Ayurvedic medicines every Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. with the Your Body Is Your Pharmacy radio show on Desi 1250 AM, radio that listens to you. Hello, folks. This is Dr. Sodi, and uh, with your favorite show, Your Body is Your Natural Pharmacy. And uh, I know that every one of you is very busy with your holiday shopping and a uh, recent snowstorm we have in uh, Seattle area. And it's got chillier and uh, there'll be more snow coming according to the weather forecast. So we need to be a little more prepared for all these things and especially our kids get the hit more than adults because their immune system is not as strong or there may be some other issues with that and today's topic is about childhood illnesses and I get lots of calls from my patients and friends and family and even people who are not my patients uh, about uh, my son or daughter have a fever Um, what should I do Uh, should I give him Tylenol syrup, should I give him ibuprofen? Uh, he has cold or she has a cold. Uh, is chronically constipated. Uh, go on getting ear infections, uh, repeated ear infections, sinus infections, chest infections, bronchitis, bronchiolitis, uh, and what not. You know, just like a, the list goes on, skin rash, uh, childhood asthma. So all these things are very common if you're a parent, you know that. And uh, when my kids were young, yes, we, we went through that too. But uh, I'm very proud to tell you that I never gave any antibiotic to my kid. My son is now 31 years old, very happy and healthy. And uh, uh, without the use of the standard uh, drug treatments, uh, we passed through. Yes, we, we got, you know, they got uh, common cold too. They got chest infections too. I don't think they got ear infection because our diet was very clean. Uh, my younger son used to have skin rash. So we all figured it out and what caused it. And we tried to follow those. And the results were not less than a miracle because none of them has to be dependent on any long-term treatment. Uh, I don't remember that if I give any antibiotic or any steroids or any antihistamine to my kids when they were young. So uh, I'm going to teach those tools which I learned from my practice and from my kids and my nephews and nieces. Uh, and also I've delivered lots of babies back in India when I was practicing back in India. So I used to treat a lot of kids back in India too. So it's it's a fun, uh, especially the younger kids are amazing. Uh, I love kids. Uh, this is one of my favorite subject uh, of the kids and their health. And uh, because also I want to focus on this because they are the future of our countries, uh, any country. If their kids are healthy, the next generation is going to be healthy. And what we are doing today, it kind of uh, not very healthy, the the way we are treating them uh, with all those uh, antibiotics and stuff. And most of them, 90% antibiotics are not needed, needed for it. And too often we are prescribing them Tylenol, ibuprofen. You see shelves full of these drugs all over the country. And in spite of the fact they have a serious side effects and it's not... Uh, uh, it's not kind of new to you all guys, you know, you just go Google it and you see lots of uh, side effects with these all standard drugs. And uh, I'm not against these drugs, by the way. And yes, there is a place for them. But most often they are prescribed without much need to anybody. And that is my problem. That is what my uh, concern is, that we should not be using these drugs, standard drugs uh, uh, for like candies for a common cold and flu and small fevers and all those kind of stuff. And yes, do they have a place? Yes, they have a place. But it should not be given to everybody who comes out to their clinic. And also, I think the parents are also at the fault. Whenever, if the doctor doesn't want to give antibiotic, parents force doctors to write a prescription for antibiotic. And I have also confronted that many times. Many parents said, no, no, write me antibiotic prescription, I'm going for a trip and blah, blah, blah. And mostly they don't need it because 90% of the infections are more are viral. There is antibiotics has a zero role in it. Somehow we have that placebo effect in our brain 
that if we give this antibiotic or this drug, they are going to get better. So it becomes like a vicious cycle and with a lot of these chronic disease, especially ear infections, you know, the kids go on getting ear infections and uh, and you give them antibiotic and uh, uh, they are better for three weeks, four weeks, couple of months, they get again. So it's not unusual for me to see these kids coming back to me again and again and again and have been given rounds of antibiotic for sinus infections, rounds of antibiotic uh, for asthma. Uh, and steroids, standard, you know, treatment, steroids. And yes, steroids has a place, but it does not fix anything, you know. Does your doctor told you that it's going to take care of asthma? No, it will take care only if you follow the laws of health and you boost up the immune system, you get the allergens away, and then you get better. Otherwise, you're not going to get any better results. So the my my stuff is, you know, what we need to do is we needed to, help the process of natural healing in our body. As the title of my program is, Your Body is Your Natural Pharmacy. So our body has the healing mechanism in us, and but we need to get that trigger in us, and we need to see what are those factors which are uh, you know, not uh, uh, able to uh, get triggered in you, and you're not getting the best result, what you need to get. So... Let's talk about a very common problem, uh, constipation. And I see lots of kids out there who has constipation. And, uh, and the most common uh, treatment given is Miralax, uh, which is a polyethylene glycol. Even the mouth is full of those chemical names in it, which is a, if you look at it, this is a ethylene oxide polymer. Ethylene oxide is a poison, by the way. It's a polymer of that. And uh, it's, it's considered safe in this dose, but when you break down the body, you can make those kind of chemicals in your system too. And it's an industrial chemical, by the way. And uh, there is a, you know, like your antifreeze, which you put in the car, is polyethylene glycol. Brake fluid is polyethylene glycol. And, and just think about putting that in your body. Uh, the If you look at the FDA, uh, you know, uh, website, and you will see, and there has been reports of uh, lots of uh, adverse effects with this uh, drug. And it's given, you know, almost by every pediatrician. If the kid has a constipation, yes, get Miralax uh, or polyethylene glycol. Uh, as I said, you know, the mouth is full I, and get a little twisted name. And I get a little twisted tongue to speak out those words too. Uh, there has been neuropsychiatric events reported. Uh, what neuropsychiatric events are like? Autism, dementia, depression, schizophrenia, multiple sclerosis, and uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease. So, you know, no parent in the world wishes his or her kid to get these kind of stuff. So I'm saying that I want to help you so that we don't need to go there if we don't need to go there. And we only need to use it if sweet and short. Otherwise, uh, we will have problem. And... Uh, so it is also kidney toxic. So it can, you know, make your kidneys toxic. So which is not a good one too. Uh, there has been cases where the kids just pass the stool in the in their pants uh, or in their you know, underwears because you know it it makes them lose very lose. Uh, and another sad part of the whole story is there has not been established pediatric uh, safety studies on it. It's not been done and it's not been established. So I don't know, you know, how these kind of stuff get over the counter and get the approval. So you can understand what's going on with that whole picture there. And the, the worst part of it all is it is a uh, pesticide, insecticide in, in heavy doses, by the way. So what that means, it is going to kill your good bacteria in the gut. So I've talked on this program many times. We are not ourselves. We have around 100 trillion cells in a, hu in a normal human body adult body, and we have 1,000 trillion bacteria in the body. And a lot of those bacteria, 90% plus, live in our in our gut. And those are very healthy bacteria. And especially after the research on biome projects, we are relearning the concepts which Ayurvedic medicine has said for thousands and thousands of years, that gut is your health. If your gut is not healthy, and these bacteria have a prime role 
in helping your whole body to be healthier. So, you know, very, very important for us to, to stabilize those gut bacteria. We already have put too much chemicals in our uh, surroundings, pesticides, insecticides, and all those kind of stuff, which is killing those good bacteria to begin with. And uh, otherwise, you know, uh, we are not helping by giving another uh, medicine, which is going to kill the bacteria. So what is the main reason of uh, constipation? The main reason is lack of fiber. And uh, most of you know fiber, but if you don't know, the fiber is present in grains, whole grains, not the uh, white rice, because the skin has more fiber. Uh, not in white flour, the skin has more uh, fiber in it. Uh, fruits, vegetables, and usually fibers are three kinds. We call them soluble fiber. What that means, if you dissolve it, uh, it will it will it become soluble. And semi-soluble, it will suspend. And insoluble, uh, it will not suspend. And you can see it will not actually absorb in your system. And it is also has every kind of fiber the soluble fiber, semi-soluble fiber, insoluble fiber has a very important role in the digestive system. And uh, these fibers are good food for the good bacteria. And whenever we're using antibiotics, we are killing good bacteria. So we are not helping the whole process again. Sugar, you know, tons of sugar we are given to the kids in the form of candies or sweets or cookies. Uh, that was not present in our food. If you just go 60, 70, 80 years ago, this amount of sugar was not present in our food. Average American use 137 pounds of sugar per year. You can imagine every one of you using the, your body weight sugar per year. And no wonder why we have so many uh, difficulties. And I'm not against using you know, candy here and there. That's okay. But not on a regular basis. And look at the sodas we have. One small eight ounce soda can have up to eight to 10 teaspoons of sugar. That is the worst thing which you can do. Uh, and you know, those have no nutritious value at all. And we put, we're putting is a water, soda, and uh, color, and sugar. And you can make it at home. Uh, and you have to spend money on it, and, and carbonation, of course. But without any nutrition value, if anything it does it, it actually makes your immune system more weaker and unhealthy. So we'll continue our discussion after the short break here, and uh, we will talk about what we can do naturally to help constipation. Panch Karma Detox Treatments are a great way to utilize natural healing mechanisms of the body. Our clinic in Bellevue, Washington offers over 36 years experience in Ayurvedic treatment. Call us for more information about our Panch Karma treatments at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. If you're suffering with diabetes, heart disease, hormonal issues, digestive issues, and other chronic health issues, we offer comprehensive Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments to reverse your diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. Are you looking for quality Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments for your chronic issues? We offer a holistic, wholesome approach to living with chronic diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. If you or someone you know is diagnosed with cancer and is interested in adjunctive holistic approach, please come and meet our doctors at Ayurvedic and Naturopathic Medical Clinic or call us at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. So folks, uh, we were talking about constipation and what we can do to help natural, uh, uh, natural ways to help constipation. So one of the interesting thing which you you know it is a fiber and fiber is present in fruits and vegetables and you know I realize kids are fussy and I think everyone gets that kind of a little kid who doesn't want everything but I think it's the responsibility of the kid, mother and father to make sure that you modify and make that kid eat those vegetables and there are many forms of it you can do it uh, for example uh, pineapple. You know, it's sweet. Kids will love it. It has a good. There are rare cases. There are kids who are allergic to it, but most of the kids will be fine. Papaya uh, is available and very easy and good to can. It's a sweet. Uh, kids will love it. Figs. Uh, figs are very phenomenally good. Uh, they have a short season, but their dried figs are available. You can use them. If you give you know, a couple of figs every day, uh, constipation will be gone because it's also digestive. These all 
fruits has a digestive enzymes in it and has a lot of fiber another my favorite is a prunes uh, prunes is again free medicine uh, available all year round uh, i do have a prune tree in my home and uh, we this time we actually i think we harvested maybe 4 500 pounds of uh, prunes and uh, then we dried them up and some of them just got wasted because we could not uh, harvest them properly uh, but these are available from almost dried prunes are available everywhere and giving a kid four five prunes a day will help it sweet is a little sweet and tarty and it's good and if you are parent you can make different form you can put in muffins uh, you can put in biscuit you can put in uh, some other form uh, you can also give carrots uh, radishes uh, beets uh, like a uh, back home we you make gajrela or a carrot halwa which is very simple you know, to make it it's not very difficult uh, you can actually use the technology what i do i grate the carrots and i put in a baking tray the those glass baking trays and sprinkle a little bit of sugar on top of it just a little bit and uh, then you know bake it at 350 degree for 30 to 45 minutes and when it bakes out you can bring it out and see if there has a lot of mo- moisture in it water then put it back again if you don't uh, just you know you can use it and put some nuts and seeds on top of it and it's yummy and it's good and have a lot of fiber plus it tastes here so you know as a parent you have some responsibilities of modifying so that the kid can take it uh oat amazing wonderful fiber rich you can make oat cookies uh, oat bran cookies you can make muffins you can make steel cut oat uh, i know a lot of kids will not like to have steel cut oat but some kids will there uh, love it uh, rolled oats you know uh, you can make apple crisp just put the right now is i think favorite part of the season to do that you know you put rolled oats and you cut lots of apple you you know the recipe otherwise go on google online and if you still need it call us at our clinic 4254538022 again the number is 4254538022 or send us a email info@ayurvedicscience.com we'll be happy to send you the recipes and uh, uh, you can have a chia seed which is another l- lot of fiber in it a flax seed so you can incorporate into your food uh, for example my wife what she does when she is uh, making a dough for the rotis uh, for the bread flat bread she put this chia seeds and flax seed in it already and she put lot of greens uh, almost our each chapati has either carrots or beets or green uh, almost more than 50% so you can see you added up the fiber right there and uh, fiber is so good for you this is all greens are so good for you you don't need vitamins because you get natural vitamins and i tell my patient that we don't need vitamins if you eating fresh fruits and vegetables according to the season because mother nature is very intelligent and it designs the things according to what is needed in that season nuts and seeds has fiber too so you know you can see we if we follow these these simple principles constipation becomes a history after that uh, probiotics giving them good quality probiotic yogurt is a good probiotic kefir is a good probiotic but if kids has allergies you can try goat yogurt you can try coconut yogurt you can also make at home cashew yogurt so a lot of these things can be done at home and you know you will have uh, no problem with the kid the another safe method is to use fructo oligosaccharide so it's again name is full mouth mouthful uh, fructo oligosaccharide are for short they call fos is available from health food stores too and it's like a powder white powder and sweet so you know as you know kids love sweet things so you can take a 1 teaspoon dissolve in water and it dissolves in water and this is sweet water and kid will love to have it and this is a wonderful fiber actually helps to uh, the good bacteria to grow and it bulk up the stool and they will have normal bowel movement uh, exercise you know very important uh, if you if your kid is sitting on the television all day long just playing the video games or on the cell phone which unfortunately a lot of kids are doing these days and i don't know how the parents are allowing that to happen this is a absolutely no no we don't need to get stimulation from these things we need to get stimulation from the mother nature there is a tons of data and if you follow my my, my facebook page or my uh, writings i talk about it that how the studies again and again show that if we go out in the mother nature the uv light stimulate your eyesight stimulate our senses our hearing senses and is really phenomenally good for us but these are giving you constant 
low level of radiation, your laptops, your cell phones, and all those uh, TV, uh, iPad, and you, you don't need to be exposing your kid too much to it. You know, minimize exposure as much as possible, and maybe you know, ration it. So okay, you're gonna get one hour of this. That's it. And uh, if you know, you guys need to be the governing agency here because otherwise nobody else is going to tell you that what you're doing is wrong. Uh, you can also give probiotics. Uh, uh, it comes in capsules, comes in powder, uh, and it actually helps. And simple, another thing is drink lots of fluid. Uh, water makes your things to f flow. And if you're dehydrated, you're going to be constipated because body needs water. And if it's uh, uh, not given to it, it's going to do other things which is more important for it. And it's not going to look at it that, uh, oh, I need to have more fluid for the digestive system too. So avoid sugary sodas, but fluids, you know, are good. And juices are also sugary sodas, by the way, in my favorite, uh, in my uh, dictionary. You can have freshly squeezed juice, but not very often. And again, uh, the best thing is to give the whole fruit. Or you can make smoothies. Uh, smoothies are easy to make. Uh, I have Vitamix, and if you don't have Vitamix, you can still make it. Uh, some folks out there has a bullet and other uh, grinders and mixers. Just put the whole fruit or vegetable, add some water, and that's it. You can put some nuts and seeds. It takes less than one minute to do all these things, and your kid will have a yummy uh, smoothie. And in the winter weather, you can add a little bit of ginger to warm it up. And uh, your kid will, it's actually, most of them, you can make very nice and uh, sugary with the fruit, basically. You're not adding any sugar, but it becomes sweet, and kids are uh, very happy to take that. So... This is, you know, very important that we follow this program. And again, constipation is becomes a habitual. So you may have to work it all the time. So this is, again, all the things which I'm telling you are very important and bare minimum to help your body anyway. So this is not only help your constipation, but helps in lots of other things. So simple, adding more fiber, drinking more water, exercise, no sugar or cut down the sodas. Honey is okay, one to two teaspoon but no sugary sodas. And in, in our home, when my kids were young, we did not bring any, any sodas. And a lot of our family friends, they were very surprised that we will never have any soda in our home. And it's not that our kids did not like the soda. Whenever they went out in the party somewhere, they, they had their share. And you can certainly see the difference when they came back home. These kids, the same nice and quiet and uh, very you know easygoing kid, uh, all of a sudden becomes a monster. And uh, now you wonder why, what has happened to them. And that was the sugar, the high octane fuel, which made that nice kid into a kind of a monster. So watch for that one. The next uh, one we're going to talk about is uh, indigestion, gas, bloating, reflux. Even kids get reflux. Adults get more. But a lot of kids I'm seeing lately uh, with the diagnosis of reflux uh, are gastrointestinal reflux disease, uh, commonly called GERD. So one major cause of uh, these all indigestion, gas, bloating, and reflux is food sensitivities. Uh, there's a lot of kids out there. They are very sensitive to food. Uh, thanks to GMO food, thanks to chemicals, thanks to pesticide, insecticide, wrapping, plastics, you name it. You know. So we were never exposed to these kind of chemicals in our life ever, in the history of humankind. And all of a sudden, we start to add so much chemicals into our field that body does not know how to handle them. And again, antibiotics uh, kills all good bacteria. Antibiotics mean killing the life. And so it does not spare between the good and the bad. So when you're killing the good ones uh, along with the bad one, you're also getting some problem with that. And you get more diarrhea, constipation too, or you can get gas and bloating. Also steroids, you know, Tylenol, ibuprofen, uh, almost all drugs has that kind of effect on the digestive system. So I will stay away from it as much as possible. Uh, another very common treatment is given for uh, reflux and uh, indigestion is a proton pump inhibitors like Nexium or Pilisac. Uh, uh, those drugs are now available on the over, over the counter too. Has lots of side effects. There's every day there is some paper published on it, um, what it can do. And one of them, you know, when these people are put on these things, they're not put for one or two days or weeks. They're put for 
lifelong process because they're not trying to fix the underlying cause. So they mask the symptom and people feel bad a little bit, but without understanding what they are getting into. Uh, this has, it causes kidney damage. Uh, there is a disease called interstitial cystitis, which is a chronic inflammation of the kidneys. Uh, it is also increases a nasty bug like a Clostridium difficile, uh, which is crazy. It, this is a unbelievably toxic bacteria. And it only uh, you know, happens, are you going to the hospital or you give lots of antibiotic and also proton pump inhibitors like Nexium. Uh, it also causes osteoporosis because basically acid is very important thing for the stomach. And when you are constantly blocking it, your body is not going to absorb your food and you're going to uh, get uh, lots of malabsorption and osteoporosis is a malabsorption disease. Uh, it also triggers lupus, which is autoimmune disease, B12 deficiency, headaches, diarrhea, abdominal pain, liver damage, and on and on and on. Again, it can be easily taken care of at home. Uh, most of these things you can just, you know, do simple thing. Uh, watch the food, what kind of things he's liking. Dairy is a big culprit here. And a lot of time people says, you know, oh my God, when I stop the milk, how my kid is going to get calcium? This is the most common question every parent asks me. And uh, I, I laugh at it and says, okay, no. So can you tell me how the cow gets his calcium? So is cow drinking somebody else's milk to get that calcium? Or uh, uh, she is, uh, you know, drinking her own milk? The answer is no, we don't need milk after we have weaned off the milk in the initial phase. Uh, if that is the reality, that all, you know, animals, especially mammals, uh, the mothers will be milking rest of the life because it was so essential for us. But it is essential in the early part of the life, but not essential in the later part of the life. And yes, milk has a good property. I'm not saying I'm not, but it also is very allergic. Why is allergic? Because the processing we have done. Uh, if uh, I, I grew up with the cows, by the way, you know, we used to have a couple of cows at home. And uh, I'm a Punjabi and, you know, we love drinking milk. Punjabis love rotis and, and the milk and the milk products. Uh, but I could not realize that why I had sinus infection and allergies all the time. Until I went to college, when the milk was not available, my allergies just went away. And then I realized, my God, the milk was the problem. So milk is not the most important food. There are other options available. You can have nut milks. You can have goat milk if you're really missing the milk part. You can have coconut milk. Uh, and for calcium, one cup of milk has 112 milligrams of calcium. One bunch of cilantro, just you can make a chutney of it, has 1,300 milligram of uh, uh, your calcium. So if you put greens, kale, chard, uh, nuts, seeds, almonds has calcium too. So all those things have calcium in it. And if you're eating more healthier food, you're going to get that very nicely. So uh, let's uh, uh, discuss the treatment part after the break here. And I will tell you what you can do at home. And these are simple remedies, which you all have these spices in your home. And you can just make it and help your kid without going for toxic side effects. If you or someone you know is diagnosed with cancer and is interested in adjunctive holistic approach, please come and meet our doctors at Ayurvedic and Naturopathic Medical Clinic or call us at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. Are you looking for quality Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments for your chronic issues? We offer a holistic, wholesome approach to living with chronic diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. Panch Karma Detox Treatments are a great way to utilize natural healing mechanisms of the body. Our clinic in Bellevue, Washington offers over 36 years experience in Ayurvedic treatment. Call us for more information about our Panch Karma Treatments at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. If you're suffering with diabetes, heart disease, hormonal issues, digestive issues, and other chronic health issues, we offer comprehensive Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments to reverse your diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. So folks, uh, I uh, did not give you my number to call. If you have any questions, you can call me at 844-301-1250. Again, the number is 
And I know there are lots of uh, folks out there uh, who has uh, small young kids and they may be wondering what they need to do from their kitchen pharmacy to help that kids. And I'm not uh, you know, saying that you should not go to see your pediatrician. Yes, you certainly need to see your pediatrician too. But a lot of these small things can be taken care of like constipation and gas and reflux and indigestion at home. So for what do you need to do for reflux and indigestion and gas and bloating? Every Indian kitchen at least have these spices in their home, fennel seeds. Uh, grandma, what she did, you know, she made a boil the couple of uh, teaspoon of fennel seed in a water uh, around say take one glass of water and put two teaspoon of uh, fennel seed in it and you can simmer it and put the lid on another best method is to uh, mm. almost uh, all especially Indian folks has pressure cooker at the home so you can put two teaspoon of uh, fennel seed and one cup of water and uh, put in a pressure cooker and don't let it come to the first whistle so you know when it uh, the steam comes up and the your uh, whistle comes out and uh, so just wait until then and then let it cool down under the steam there. So what are you going to see? The, the fennel water, which is going to make out of it, you can then strain it and give it to a small kid in a tablespoon of it three, four times a day. If a small kid is really small, you can give it around half teaspoon. And say uh, if it's less than one year, half teaspoon to one teaspoon every few hours. It's a non-toxic. It does not have any problem. And you see the flatulence and the gas, indigestion, even reflux get better. Another thing which you can do, anise seed, which is also called the ajwine seed. It's not star anise, by the way, the ajwine seeds. And exactly similarly, you can do that. And it's a little more powerful than even fennel seed for taking care of gas. If you have a lot of gas, I will go for ajwine seed. Another wonderful herb is a dill seed. Uh, back home, we used to call it pahari saw for uh, the fennel seed from the mountains. And uh, you can also combine them. You know, you can have a fennel, anise, and dill seed. You can take one teaspoon of each, one cup of uh, uh, water, make in the pressure cooker, and you can give the kids. Licorice, you know, is amazing, wonderful, non-toxic herb. And you can make a tea, you can get a powder, mix it with the honey. If your kid is not uh, less than a one year, less than one year, uh, the pediatric association does not allow uh, honey to be consumed by less than one year old. Although I don't see any problem, but uh, that is the you know recommendation right now. And in younger folks, what you can do is mix with the uh, water or uh, you know, even milk uh, or maybe some apple uh, sauce, uh, something of that nature. Uh, you know, and you can give it. And this is a wonderful digestive, eliminative, carminative, and uh, it also helps take care of the gas. Uh, turmeric is another simple uh, home remedy is available. Uh, there has been studies done on dyspepsia reflux, there was a 66% improvement in the symptom with just giving turmeric. So you can see that these spices has a lot more better safety range than all these drugs. And we have been using them for centuries and centuries. It has not killed people unless you're gonna use a bucket of it. And uh, they're safe and they're as good as the pharmaceutical drug and, and you know, the especially reflux and indigestion gas is a food sensitivity issue. In our clinic, we draw the blood and we send for the food sensitivity. And surprisingly, a lot of food the patient is consuming, they have allergies to them. And more often, they use same kind of food, the more often you're allergic to it. So that's why I tell my patients, rotate. Don't give same thing again and again because that is surely going to spoil and you're gonna cause problems for you. Uh, ginger is another of my favorite herb, and you can mix with the honey. Uh, if it's a small kid, just put a little pinch of it. You can, if you're less than a one year old, you can juice the fresh ginger, maybe use four or five drops of it, and uh, put some water in there. Or you can use fennel seed with it to make a little sweeten, or you put licorice uh, in it and get a little sweeten. And uh, you can also put a little glycerin with it for the small kid if you don't want to give. Uh, uh, you know, use it, uh, the honey with it uh, and mix with the glycerin, the vegetable glycerin, of course, just a little bit of, which is available over the counter again, and it becomes sweeter and it's quite non-toxic. And so, you know, you can take care of these things very easily and you don't have to use these proton pump inhibitors uh, uh, like uh, uh, and, and cut down the side effects completely. So the next common childhood kids is, uh, disease is 
common cold, flu, upper respiratory tract infections, sore throat, uh, sinus infections. Majority of these are viral. So rarely, rarely they are bacterial. And sometimes there can be strep infection. Uh, so basically, you know, if you're really concerned that, oh my God, I don't want to uh, say if I my kid needs antibiotic or not, uh, you can ask your doctor to do a test. For a step throat, there is a rapid test available in, in, in the office. You can find the results. Uh, or you know, for the uh, if you have a high fever and you have a cold and flu and you don't want to give antibiotic, which you should not give your kid, you can ask for the uh, CBC, which is a blood count. And uh, in a small kid, you don't have to draw the venous blood, so the torture is less. Uh, you can just do a pin prick and the blood can be collected from the capillary blood. And the results can come in a couple hours back on the same day. And uh, you can then decide, you know, is it bacterial? Because if there's a bacteria, certainly the white cell count will be high. And if it is a viral, you will have lymphocyte high and uh, the polymorphs will be high in the bacterial infections. So you can simply see from the pattern and drawing simple blood test and can just stop the use of antibiotics right there. And why not to use it? And the CBC is, even if insurance doesn't cover it, is such a inexpensive tool to do it. I think costs less than $10 or so, uh, at least from our clinic here. Uh, so, you know, you can certainly use those kind of simple tools to help your kid not to be uh, forced to get antibiotic. And most of the time, the doctor doesn't want to give it either. But then the folks out there are forcing their doctor, no, no, give me antibiotic. So folks, please don't do that because this is not going to be helpful for your kid because they are going to have problem with it. So now, if you have a fever, most of the time it is a virus again. So viruses, we don't have a lot of medications available so far. And if they are available, like for flu, there is a like a time flu is available, but it does not improve too much the quality time. The illness is reduced only half a day and the considering the toxicity of it, I don't think it's worth it. And personally, I believe getting this common cold flu are healthy for you, unless you go and getting every week, that's a different story or every month. But once a year, we should all get it because what it does, it actually causes the exercise of immune system and you get stronger. Your immune system got very, very stronger. And watch for the fever. Your fever should not go above 102. So don't get panic and oh my God, my kid has 102 fever. That's healthy. The fever is a good thing for your kid. It is helping your kid because the body is fighting. And even if the fever go above 104, that's still safe. Uh, hardly ever there will be any seizures uh, has will happen with the 104 fever. There's been a lot of debate in the pediatrics about this one, what you know, temperature we should tell our patient because a lot of panic uh, uh, parents, you know, parents certainly panic when the fever is there in their kids uh, and also the health practitioners also create that panic. And oh my God, be much sure uh, if you get a very high fever, they're going to get a seizure. And so seizure is so rare, by the way. But when we say to the, our um, patient, they get panic. And, and if their kid is just like a, has a little, uh, uh, a little jerk there, they think, oh my God, he's having a seizure. And which is not very usual, by the way. And so I think a lot of uh, how you deliver it uh, from the, uh, medical uh, health practitioner to the patient is also important. So what I tell people, give them lots of fluid, drink lots of water. Fever is a good thing for you. Fever is not bad. Cold compresses, you know, put cold on the forehead, on the uh, legs and arms. And you can do a cold sponge, you know, it lowers the, blood, uh, the, the temperature immediately. Uh, I also encourage people to do ghee or coconut massage on the head. It brings your temperature body temperature around two degrees right there. So 102 is going to be 100. Yes, you know, you may have to repeat it again. That's the same thing what you do with the Tylenol. If the fear goes up, you give it again. You can do the same procedure again. Again, Tylenol is not helping the virus or bacteria. It's just temporarily bringing your fever down. Uh, ginger is another, is we call them diaphoretic because what that means, it, it helps them to sweat. So you can mix ginger with honey or uh, glycerin if this kid is too small, just a little pinch of it for the kid and give it to them. And uh, it is a known uh, uh, for lowering the body temperature. A lot of homeopathic remedies that are there because they are very safe, non-toxic. Uh, if you know, uh, I, I'm not a trained homeopath. I'm a, I've been trained a little bit, but I'm not a trained homeopath. 
uh, and so I don't try to dabble in it. But homeopathy for kids works like a charm. Uh, Tulsi, you know, our holy basil is another very simple, and a lot of Indian families especially has Tulsi plants at home, and you can crush few leaves and mix with the water, give it, or mix with honey if the kid is above one years of age. If they're younger, they can mix with glycerin uh, or give with the water, just mix with the water and give to them. And holy basil does not have a bad taste. If you're not able to find uh, Tulsi or holy basil, you can also give Thai basil, by the way, or other basil. They're very similar properties and you can get almost similar results. And uh, I also give glycerates, which means the glycerin preparations of licorice or ginger. Uh, one of my favorite is a lomatium, uh, which is a local herb. Uh, from Eastern Washington, uh, OSHA, uh, yarrow tea, ginger tea. These things can be given to help to cut down the fever. Yarrow is another native plant here, and uh, yarrow tea is available actually from the health food store. Uh, there are tea bags also available. Also, loose yarrow is available too. Even the, the tincture of a yarrow is available. The tincture is the alcohol preparation, so you can give few drops, four or five drops, and uh, kid will have a antipyretic effect with it if you really want to do it rather i will not use anything if you don't need to but if you really wanted to use you can use ginger or you can yarrow or you can use a uh, uh, lomatium osha and uh, that actually these herbs help the boost immune system too so that's why i like them it, they are not bringing down the uh, temperature only but they also boosting your immune system so following these simple remedies you will rarely need antibiotic just to tell you, in the last 36 years, I think I may have written less than 15 antibiotic prescriptions from my clinic here. And and most of them are also because the patients really uh, want it. Uh, recently, I had a, a UTI, uh, actually adult UTI female patient and uh, that did not get better. And so I wrote a prescription for one antibiotic, just one pill of sulfur drug. And the pharmacist was saying, oh, no, no, you're not uh, getting better. And and usually that was a recommendation previously uh, for one uh, sulfur drug a day only. And uh, she got better you know, because if your body is good and you don't need a uh, lot of antibiotic. So, yes, I do use antibiotic, but I use with a lot of caution and with as little as possible. Uh, I think using too much is not good. And uh, that certainly has a, a adverse effect in my dictionary. The next common problem is ear infections, and uh, it's too often kids get ear infections. And uh, uh, the, the root cause of ear infection is basically uh, your eustachian tube, which is, you know, start from your second molar, open them the middle ear, that get blocked. So this is a drainage uh, the air comes out of when we speak or when we eat food. That get clogged in, and then the mucus and bacteria uh, comes in and causes the infection there. So the most common treatment is antibiotic and uh, doses of antibiotic again and again. It's not unusual for me to see folks out there who has been taking antibiotic for three, four years. Uh, you can well imagine that how effective that has been. So if they're not working, means they're not working. And uh, plus these antibiotics has a very little role, if any, unless it is a bacterial infection, then they will have a role. Most of them, they will not because it is a cause, the ca root cause is allergies and uh, uh, also the formation, the anatomy of the tube. And as the kids are young, the tubes are not uh, straight, they are slanted. And so what happens, they can't drain properly. So as the kid grows out, uh, the, the tubes matures and uh, you're able to drain it more properly. So the treatment given is also is the ear tubes. That's one of the worst decision any parent can take to put the ear tubes in their kids. Uh, there's a tons of data available. There's a meta-analysis available, which has shown that they don't help you. Actually, uh, it, they are put, uh, previously they were said, oh, if you don't put it, your kid is going to be have hearing issues. Uh, they have a learning disabilities. Uh, they can't hear you. They will, have, they will be laughed at by the colleagues and by their uh, fellow students or uh, your parent may think he's inattentive. Uh, yes, that, that happens, you know, but few days, uh, as soon as the infection is over, uh, you get better. But when you put the ear tube, you're traumatizing the drug, the eardrum. You're putting a hole through it, and then you're putting a tube. And too often, these tubes comes out. And I've seen so many kids, the tube was put in, and just one week later, the tube is out. 
didn't help in the beginning. So, but the trauma with the tubes, inner tubes, can last six to ten years. And uh, so there is a lot more people who got deaf or has a hearing loss because of they had put in these ear tubes. So basically, it's not even recommended by the uh, doctors too, but I think still practiced, and I don't know why, but uh, it's without much benefit to the, the parents, uh, sorry, the kids. So basically, what is the problem? Problem is uh, uh, there the tubes are not draining properly into the mouth. Uh, it, the the eustachian tube opens up above the teeth on the second molar and they are not draining. It's, so what I encourage them to do the drainage massage. So you can yeah. actually take a little olive oil on your fingertips and you go around the jaw line and you massage it down and you go around the neck line and you massage it down. And as you do it, uh, ask your kid to swallow something like a, maybe some chewing gum or something. So what are you doing? You're forcing the eustachian tube to get activated and with the drainage, with the massage, the plugs in the eustachian tubes are taken care of. So, you know, you wash your face every day, you clean your teeth every day, do this to your kid every day. It will take one or two minutes, simple. And if you want to really, uh, if you have questions regarding it, I can also put it on YouTube and uh, uh, I you know said how to do this massage. It's a simple technique which will save your kid from the tubes. And it, the tubes are put under general anesthesia. That has its own side effect. And when you can do this very easily on a daily basis, now your kid will have no tubes and he'll be hearing properly and without blocking them. And so the old Ayurvedic remedy is also put oil in the ear, uh, almond oil, olive oil. You can put few drops in the ear and then do the massage, the lymphatic drainage, and you'll be surprised to see that your kid is getting better and better and better. And another thing which I want to tell, especially the young mothers, when they're breastfeeding, sit down, take the baby in the lap and breastfeed then. Because when you're lying on the bed and your baby is lying to next to you and you breastfeeding at that time, the angle of the eustachian tube is different. It's very easy at that angle to go to get the milk into the eustachian tube. And that is another reason why kids can get the problem with the middle ear infections or ear infections. So simply, yes, I know, you know, the moms, you have a hard role there. You know, I, I salute to all the moms of the world and uh, I have a lot of respect for the mom. You know, yes, you have to wake up in the middle of night many times if your kid is small, younger, uh, but you are helping your kid not to get infection. And uh, so, yes, you know, you have to do a little sacrifice, but if your kid is sick, you have to sacrifice anyway. A healthy kid is going to sleep well and you're not going to get disturbed. And uh, as he's going to um, grow and flourish, uh, you may not have to wake up in the middle of night because he can get a good feed and uh, go through the whole process, you know, the uh, maybe one time at night and you'll be fine. So I think just following the simple tips, watch what kind of food uh, you're feeding your kid. And again, the major allergens are dairy products and uh, sometimes nightshade family, sometimes wheat, uh, avoiding. And biggest one is the the milk, the dairy product, peanuts. Uh, uh, they can also cause problem there. And it's too often given to all these kids. So, you know, basically simple following these, these uh, uh, tips, you can help the kids not to get that these infections and your kid will be happy and he will have no loss of hearing and he will be attentive. Uh, you know, you you have that. And when you get a cold or flu, the infection goes to your ear, uh, you don't hear properly. So same thing is happening with the kid, but you don't get uh, hearing loss forever. You, yeah, you lo lose your, your hearing, get a little less for a few days, four, five, six days, and then you get back to the normal. And But if the kid is getting again and again, the ear tubes is not the solution either. Uh, the studies show that they get more hearing loss than at the first place. So make sure that you do it properly because this is the health of your kid. Surgical procedures should not be jumped at very quickly. It has to be thoroughly investigated before you jump for any surgical procedure because when you cut with the knife, that's it. Done is done. You can't repair after that. So before you follow for any surgery, maybe take second opinion or third opinion if you're not very happy with it. So we'll talk about more uh, about other uh, childhood uh, diseases when we come after the this break.
If you're suffering with diabetes, heart disease, hormonal issues, digestive issues, and other chronic health issues, we offer comprehensive Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments to reverse your diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. If you or someone you know is diagnosed with cancer and is interested in adjunctive holistic approach, please come and meet our doctors at Ayurvedic and Naturopathic Medical Clinic or call us at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. Are you looking for quality Ayurvedic and naturopathic treatments for your chronic issues? We offer a holistic, wholesome approach to living with chronic diseases. Call us at 425-453-8022 for more information. Panch Karma Detox Treatments are a great way to utilize natural healing mechanisms of the body. Our clinic in Bellevue, Washington offers over 36 years experience in Ayurvedic treatment. Call us for more information about our Panch Karma Treatments at 425-453-8022. That's 425-453-8022. Welcome back again and we are talking about childhood illnesses today and uh, the next common disease which I want to talk about in the kids is bronchiolitis. Uh, Bronchiolitis is a disease of the small blood, uh, sorry, the tiny airways which get inflamed and then they are not able to uh, breathe properly. The mucus plugs it and get into difficulty in breathing. A lot of symptoms are very much like you have a chest infection or asthma. And very common in the younger children, less than two years of age, and most common in the first three to six months of the age. And uh, uh, it's very common more in males than the females, uh, premature babies, and uh, uh, the kids who are not breastfed. Again, you know, every mom should breastfeed their babies unless there is some uh, stuff happens. But all mothers in the world should breastfeed their babies, and at least up to one year. And uh, uh, so if you have the, you know, premature babies or you have a uh, issue uh, with this, uh, you know, the bronchiolitis, uh, the treatment again is they're given antibiotics, they're given steroids, they're given uh, uh, the bronchodilators uh, and it's caused by a virus again. And the very common virus is called RSV. Uh, around more than 50% of the kids get this, the RSV. and But you can also get it from uh, rhinovirus, which is the most common, common cold kind of virus. And uh, the flu bug, you can also get. And there's also some uh, pneumonia viruses or adenoviruses or coronaviruses. So different, different viruses causes this um, inflammation of the teeny airways and can cause the problem with the kid. And again, uh, the treatments are given to uh, you know, bronchodilated and steroids are given to cut down the inflammation. You may need for short term, but I've seen kids which are on these treatments forever. And uh, you know, most of the parents get very concerned. Uh, you say, oh yeah, these steroids are safe. Uh, you can take them for a long time. And I yet have to find the research which will say that. And any research we look at long term, they have lots of side effects. Yes, short term, no problem. But long term, they should be not used. The another very similar stuff uh, related to this is bronchitis, which is the, actually the big, big pipe of the lungs get swollen and uh, uh, like whooping cough is a bronchitis, you know, the, and the typically when the kid is uh, coughing, it comes like a bark. Uh, so there's a barking cough and it's because the bigger pipe get inflamed and uh, uh, usually you cough up very thick mucus, yellowish mucus because of the infection. And uh, uh, so the bronchitis happens to kids who are immune compromised and uh, that, uh, you know, not very healthy. So it looks like there's a caller. Uh, go ahead, caller. Hello. Hi, Dr. Sodi. This is Paras. Hi, Paras. How are you doing? Doing good. So I had a question. Sometimes, like, kids get diagnosed with low iron. Um, so what kind of food do you recommend, especially if they are primarily on a vegetarian diet and haven't develop the taste for, for chicken or egg. So what do you recommend uh, as a regular diet to kind of help uh, develop the iron needed for their growth? Yeah, sure. Uh, one thing which you can do is you can cook spinach and make a soup of it. That's a simple, easy method of giving iron. Uh, you can cook in iron pots 
uh, which is also give you some low dose of iron. Uh, also molasses, which is sweet, has some iron in it too. So that's the more vegetarian ways of giving iron. Uh, red meat is the best source of, you know, especially goat, beef, lamb. Uh, you can make soup of it.